So yesterday we uh, made a Django framework, sorry, a Django backend, so an API. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating a React front end to interact with the Django back end. And much of this is going to look familiar. It's pretty much the same thing that we've been doing uh, when we were working with that Locos 3001 server. Uh, just a few minor differences, but otherwise this is all going to be things you have seen before. So I have already created a uh, project here called, I'm calling Wine Frontend. I'm going to npm install a few more things. I'm going to install, npm install React Router DOM. I'm going to npm install React Bootstrap. And I'm going to npm install react bootstrap table. All right, with that out of the way, I'm going to start by going to app.js. I'm going to change a couple of things around. So I'm going to import browser router and route from React Router DOM. Going to get rid of all of this. I'm going to set up a browser router. And for now, I'm going to uh, create two routes. One is going to be exact. It's going to be our home page. And that's going to be, so component equals home page. I'm going to set up another route. Path equals slash slash wines slash wine ID. And component is going to equal our wine page. And I'm going to have to import these pages I haven't made yet. So I'm going to import home page from dot slash pages slash homepage.js, import wine page from dot slash pages slash wine page.js. Now that I've done that, I'm going to make a folder for them. So pages, homepage.js, and wine page.js. And for now, I just want to get these set up as basically as possible. So I'm going to import React. And component. I'm going to make these class-based components because I feel like it. Class wine page extends component. Render. Return, div, each one, this will just say wine page on it for now. And then export default wine page. I'm going to just copy all of this into home page and just change the names around. With that done, I'm going to npm start. I actually need to, I keep on forgetting, I need to go into the project first, npm start. Make sure that this is working as written so far.
So it's still starting. All right, we have our home page, and if I go to slash wine slash one, we have our wine page. So again, this so far is all uh, review, but what questions do you have about setting up React so far? It looks good so far. OK. Great. So now I want to actually make it so that I can actually contact like contact my API. So the API that I made yesterday was having some trouble. So I'm going to be using uh, an API that we set up for last last cohort. So I'm going to make a new folder here called API. Oh, don't know why API. Inside of that, I'm going to make a new file called wineapi.js. And I'm going to make two methods. One's going to be called fetch wine by ID. It's going to take a wine ID as an argument. I'm going to return fetch. And so Actually, I'm going to also save my base URL as a, as a variable before I forget. So I'm going to say const base URL equals. And let me copy and paste it real quick. Oop. So lima wine api dot heroku app dot com slash wines. Uh, one thing you'll notice, though, when you do it for your own servers is it won't work right away. That's because of something called CORS, C-O-R-S. CORS is a protocol that prevents an API from making calls outside of its own domain. So in order to get around that for temporarily, I'm going to add something right here called HTTPS colon slash slash CORSAnywhere.HerokuApp.com slash and then the name of the URL. And that'll allow us to make requests to something that don't normally have cores enabled. So now I'm going to fetch requests to base uh, dollar sign base URL. And there's already a slash at the end of that, so that would be slash. wine ID. I'm going to say dot then response response dot JSON. And then I'm going to have one for fetching all of the wines. So fetch wines. It's going to return fetch to our base URL dot then response response dot JSON. And then at the bottom, I'm going to export default fetch wine by ID and fetch wines. So first off on a home page, I want my home page to fetch all of the wines and save them in state. So I'm going to say state equals that. Wines is an empty array. And then I'm going to say when component did mount, I need to import wine API. I forgot about that. So import wine API from dot dot slash API slash wine API dot JS. 
And I'm going to say wine api.fetchwines. Dot then I have my API response. We're going to this dot set state. Wines is now going to be my API response dot wines. All right, I've got some issues here. Response is not defined, base URL is not defined. Oh, base URL. And then do I need to put it in print? Oh, I see, I forgot the arrow here. OK. So if I go to, if I go back to my home page, let's see if we were able to successfully make our GET request. So no errors. That's always a good sign. If I go to my components, they should be saved in my home page's state. Yep. So if I look in state, I've got a whole bunch of wines with descriptions and everything. All right. What questions do you have about how we were able to load our wines? No, how are you navigating to the home page? Did you install that on the app.js, the component, or how are we getting to home? Uh, so home page oh, is some a route. Okay. Yeah, it's a route. All right, so now I want to actually display these. To do that, I'm going to make a new component just to display them. I'm just going to make a new folder called components. Inside components, I'm going to make a new folder, and we'll call this one wine list. And inside of wine list, I want to make a new file called wine list.js. And I'm going to make this one a functional component. So I'm going to say function wine list takes props as an argument. And for now, I'm just going to export default wine list. Make sure I return a div. And in my home page, I want to import it. So import wine list from dot dot slash components slash wine list slash wine list dot js. Uh oh. Can't resolve dot dot slash components slash wine list slash wine list dot js in that. Why can't it? Did I misspell something? Did I, I exported it? One sec. Try this one again. Dot dot slash components slash wine list slash wine list dot js. Oh, okay. So wine list wasn't inside the wine list folder. That's why. So under home page, I'm going to render a wine list where wines is going to equal this dot state dot wines. So it's passed down to my wine list as props. And in order to display these, I'm going to be importing something from React Bootstrap table. I'm going to be making a table, which is not pretty, but it works. Table and table header column from React Bootstrap table. And inside of here, I'm going to have a Bootstrap table. This is a neat thing. I can say data equals props.wines. 
Then I can have some table header columns. So this one's going to be called is key and data field is going to equal ID. And then I have another table header column where the data field is going to equal, is it name or wine name? Wine name. Name. A table header column here where the data field equals price. where the data field equals varietal. Data field equals description, like so. So now if I refresh the page, I've got this uh, fairly well, uh, what's the word, formatted table already set up. So the ID isn't showing up, but the name and all of that is. So if I probably just get rid of that. Okay, you know, you need to have that line there. But I'll get rid of the word ID. There we go. So it doesn't look super good, but it's all there. So the bootstrap table is just a neat uh, neat tool that's given to us by the React Bootstrap table library. And so we can just give it headers and say, give us the wine name, the price, the varietal, and it'll display them all like this without any real formatting, but it looks, you know, it works. All right. What questions do you have about this wine list component? Okay, so next I want to have my wine page so I can actually see the details of any particular wine. So I'm gonna be importing my wine API again. API slash wineapi.js. I'm gonna have state equal wine. It's gonna be an empty, empty object. I'm gonna have my component did mount. So first off, in order to fetch a wine, I need to get the ID. How do I get the ID from my wine page, considering that this is what my URL path is gonna look like? How do I get to this wine, wine ID? Props match params wine ID. Yep. So const wine ID is going to equal this dot props dot match dot params dot wine ID. Once we have the ID, we can call on wine API dot fetch wine by ID with our wine ID. Then we'll say dot then we'll have our wine call this.setState, where wine is now our new wine. Oh, need the parentheses around that. All right, we got some bracket problems, always fun. All right, let me try to start this over before I mess it up even further. All right, wine this dot set state. Wine is now wine. There we go. So I'm going to visit one of my pages, see if it's saved to state.
Uh oh, all right, so we have a problem here. Failed to load resource codes anywhere, heroku.com, wines undefined. So something went wrong with our API, I believe. So fetch wine and ID. So the question is, all right, what happened there? So we have our component did mount, wine equals this dot props to match the wine ID, fetch wine ID, we pass in that. I'm gonna try console.logging wine ID, because that should have been passed to our function. Is it just labeled differently there? Like the, the wine ID was wine capital I capital D in app. Yeah. So that's wine ID and here was ah, you're right. Fresh the page. There we go. Now if I check my components should see in our wine page in state, we now have wine with a description, price varietal and wine name. Good catch, thank you. All right, so now that that's there, I want to, actually, I want to make sure I am rendering it to the page. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna destructure this a bit. So I'm gonna say const, wine name, price, varietal, and description, all equal this.state.wine. And then I'm just gonna set up, you know, a nice little thing to display it here. So name, the p tag is gonna be na a wine name. H2 price, p tag is going to be price, H2 varietal, varietal, H2 description is going to equal p tag description. So here we have Chateau de Barc, 11, 1199. It's a Cabernet Slaveron. Dogs like this one. Got a slash wine slash two. Organic Earth, 799 is a Rend blend. It's a good wine from Trader Joe's. All right, so what questions do you have about how we fetched just one wine and set it up? All right, so ne next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make it so that I can add a new wine to my API. So I'm gonna make a new route, exact path equals, this is going to be add wine, and our component is going to be an add wine page, which we haven't made yet. Import add wine page, from dot slash pages slash add wine page dot js. Make a new file called add wine page. Make this one, let's make it a functional component, why not? Add wine page. For now, it'll just return a div, h1 add wine page, export default add wine page, no, add wine page. So if I go to locals 3000 slash add wines, 
All right. Oh, add wine, not wines. All right, something's going wrong. One sec. Make sure my route is set up correctly. So slash add wine. There we go. All right. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go back to my wine API because I'm going to write a method to add a wine to the API. So add wine. It's going to take a wine object as an argument. And we're going to return fetch with our base URL new. I'm, I'm going to take this slash out of here because it's really bothering me that I that it's not there. <laughs> that's just a that's a, it's that's just a stylistic thing, really. And then I'm going to need to give this one headers. Content type is going to be application slash JSON. My method is going to be post. And my body is going to be json.stringify with that wine object. And now I'm going to add wine to my export default. I'm going to go back to my add wine page. So first off, I'm going to make a form. So instead of this, I'm going to have, I need to import a few things first, actually. So I'm going to import form and button from React Bootstrap. I'm going to import wine API from dot dot slash API slash wine API dot JS. And I'm going to import redirect from React Router. So first, I'm going to set up my form. So I'm going to make a There's form. There's a typo in the first import statement. I'm sorry. I think. Um, oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I, I saw it wrong. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have a form, and then I'm going to have a form dot group with a control ID of wine name. Inside of that, we're going to put a form.label with wine name, and then a form.control. Like so, so this is something that that uh, React Bootstrap has that can let me set up a form pretty quickly. Oh. So this one's going to be varietal. going to be price. This one's going to be description. And then on the bottom, we need a button. Whose variant equals primary and type equals submit. Lowercase s, submit. Oh, I have React Bootstrap. So it's compiling, taking its good sweet time with that. All 
Refresh the page. You should see our form. It just shouldn't work yet. Uh-oh. Invalid hook call. Hooks can only use inside the body of a function component. Where did I use a hook? Interesting. Mismatching versions of React and the renderer, such as React DOM. Maybe it's because I made a made this a functional component. Let's try turning this into a class-based component. Maybe that was my problem. Import React and component from React. Class add wine page extends component. Then we'll have render. And then I'll just copy this entire return thing here. Noah, was it just because you didn't have React imported um, for that functional component? Uh, I don't think I need to because in this wine list here, I didn't have to import React. Yeah, I'm assuming it's something to do with maybe this for React Router's forms or React Router, React Bootstrap's forms probably use hooks in some way that I'm, I'm not understanding. That's my guess. So I'm going to, again, try to make this and see if this works better if I turn it into a functional component, a uh, class-based component. And if not, we'll have to keep on uh, hunting a bit. I did this wrong. Render. All right. There it is again, invalid hook call. Interesting. I really wish you would tell me a little bit more about where this happened. All right, so something to do with React Bootstrap's form, I'm assuming. All right, fine. If that's the way it is, then I will just use a different ver a different way of using a form. Just got to remember how to do that. Was that, let's see. Was that in News Site 5 where we did React Forms? I'm trying to remember real quick. All right, so let's just do an old fashioned form then. Just gonna get, if I get rid of this form, let's see if that, if the problem goes away. Okay, so it is the form component. I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll figure it out. A little form here. And then we'll have input. I have like, I'm totally blanking on how to do forms all of a sudden. <laughs> P, I just want to do this. Wine name. P price we can say type equals text. P varietal.
All right. We've got a very, a more basic form here. I'll try to figure out what's going on with the uh, form, React Router's form thing. But for now, this should work. Just should get the job done. Sorry, one sec. Do all right. So now we're going to need to have a function to handle uh, when we submit the form. So on submit equals this dot handle submit. We can call it. Call this right here. Handle submit. And we're actually going to need to have this take an event as an argument. So we can event dot prevent default. All right, making sure we didn't break anything because I'm suddenly doubting myself. So I hit submit and the event uh, gets prevented. It doesn't refresh the page. All right, so now we need to have this actually grab our wine and then so grab our wine from the form and then uh, create a wine object and send it to our add wine API. So we can say const wine object equals event dot target dot elements zero. Sorry, we need to say wine name. Ugh. Wine name equals event dot tell prints elements zero dot value and price event dot target dot elements one dot value varietal event dot target dot elements two dot value and description is event dot target dot elements three dot value. Just to make sure that works, I'm going to console dot log my wine object. So if I do cab sav, 12 varietal is red, description is it's wine. Hit submit. Right. Wine name, price, varietal, and description are all in the same, all in the right place. So now that that's done, I should be able to say wine API dot add wine with my wine object dot then I want to. Ah, I forgot something. So I want to make sure I redirect to the home page when this happens. So to do that, I'm going to add something to state called redirect, which is set to false by default. And then I'm going to say dot then if I have when I get my response, I'm going to say this dot set state where redirect is set to true. And then I'm going to change things up a bit here. I'm going to say if this dot state dot redirect, I'm going to return a redirect thing here that takes us to our home page. Don't need the second tag when we can just close it out like this. So when we add a wine, when we get our response, we set redirect in state to true, which triggers a re-render. And we say, if this.state.redirect is true, we return this redirect, which takes us to the home page. So if I try to add a, so I've add my cab sav for $12, varietal is Cabernet Sauvignon. 
It's a good cab. Hit submit. There's our cab sav at the bottom, $12, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it's a good cab. Got some errors here, but these are for unique keys, which I'm not going to worry about right now. All right, so it's terrifying. It is ugly, but it works. And that's something you'll have to do to, uh, you'll do be doing today is not only making this work, but also making it pretty. Uh, what questions do you have about how we added a new wine to this or anything in the wine front end? I know I have one question regarding the redirect you just wrote. Um, why do we need to make that a state? Why can't we just have a function such as like a link to um, in the handle submit function just to mm -hmm. redirect the home page? That's a good question. Uh, part of it is it's a it's just a formatting thing. It can depend on what you do. I like doing it this way because when you set state, it triggers a re-render. And triggering that re-render essentially allows you to have a little more control over what actually gets rendered. Uh, using, for example, this.props.history.push would also work. Uh, I just think using the redirect is a little more elegant. I see. Thank you. Because, yeah, when you use this.props.history.push, it is you are literally going into your browser's history and literally shoving something in there as opposed to using a uh, React component. All right. What other questions do you have about the Wine front end? You know, can you explain what um, the, the first URL you put in front of the base was again? Uh, Oh, cores anywhere? Yeah, I was just about to get to that. So right now, so if you try to contact your own Wine APIs right now as written, you're going to get an error that says that you aren't allowed to, you aren't authorized to view it because of cores policy. So cores policy is something that states that something, anything outside of your, in this case, it would be your Heroku uh, domain is not allowed to contact this uh, this function. So another website. You can contact it through Postman, maybe. But if you try to get it through localhost 8000, it will, it'll, send, it won't, it'll block you. Cores Anywhere is one way of getting around that for now. But what you really want to do is you want to make sure that you authorize your front end to talk to your back end. And I was actually just about to get to that. So thank you for that good segue. So I'm going to have to find my wine API. One sec. Was that in, did I save that in examples for mics under Django wine project. All right. So I've been having some issues with this in terms of deploying it to Heroku, so I won't be able to demonstrate it too much, but I can show you the process for uh, adding cores. It just won't work in this case, but the process should remain the same. So I'm going to make sure I activate my virtual environment, and I'm going to pip install something called Django cores headers. And then I'm going to pip freeze with requirements.txt. So that should add cores headers to my requirements.txt. Then in my app, my sorry, my project, I'm going to go to settings. And in installed apps, I'm going to add cores headers. And then in middleware, I'm going to put these at the top to make sure they work. So I'm going to use cores headers dot middleware dot cores middleware. And Django dot middleware dot common dot common middleware. That's already in there on line 50, actually. Oh, so it is. Thank you. And then 
I'm not sure if this is already here, if we need to add it. I think you need to add it. Yeah. So I'm going to add something called cores origin whitelist. And that would be, you can, this is a list of URLs that are allowed, of websites that are allowed to contact your API. So I'll do HTTPS colon slash slash your full site.herokuapp.com. And you can also put your like your local host yeah, in so there you, as well. Yeah, so I could do HTTP colon slash slash local host 8,000. Is that the right? 3,000. Yeah. And that should work as well. Yeah. And you can put a, a, a bunch of different um, URLs in there. Mm -hmm. But you just have to make sure that you have HTTP and or HTTPS in front of the URL. Mm -hmm. Yep. And once you've done that, you can uh, commit these to your Jing uh, to Heroku the same way you would anything else. You could just do git add, git commit dash m added cores middleware, and then you say git push Heroku master. And that'll automatically update it in in Heroku. So it's taking its sweet time with it. What were the commands for updating the Heroku again? Oh. Uh, so it's the same. The first two steps are the same as for when you want to do uh, anything with git. So git add, git commit. And then to push it up to Heroku, you do git push Heroku master. Thank you. Yeah. See, this nope. is where my thing keeps breaking is proc file declares types none. So my proc file doesn't seem to be working right for some reason. It never does. I don't know why. but. That's beside the point. Is it because you're git ignore your requirements that txt files on the wrong or in? Should they be? I thought they were supposed to be here. Are they on the same level as the proc file? No, the proc file's in the app. That's where I was. I th I thought I was told to do it. Yeah, that's the proc file's in the correct place. I'm just wondering if the requirements that txt or the git ignore might be in the wrong spot. Maybe. Well, yeah. I'll worry about that later. Anyway, don't worry about that, everybody. That's not your problem. Uh, what, what questions do you have about adding cores to your Django project? Is this a cores thing? Should we just add this uh, as soon as we make a Django API and not wait until we're connecting, uh, I guess, a front end? Should we just automatically do this? Uh, well, if you, you should do it as soon as you have a front end that can communicate with it because if you don't have a front end yet, there's no URL to add to your cores origin whitelist. And the core security, like without this cores header stuff, is automatically set to just deny everything. So it's essentially a closed system until you actually add something to your cores origin whitelist. OK. OK, what other questions do you have? So the way that we're doing this, we have a, like we have an API app and a front end app. Like are they they're separate apps at this, this point? Are they deployed separately? Yeah, so generally speaking, your front end and your back end will be deployed to separate, uh, separate servers that are communicating with one another. Do we also still keep that cores anywhere thing in our URLs even after this? Yeah, good question. Uh, so once you've done this, you don't need that cores anywhere anymore. Yeah. So once you've added uh, your front end to your cores origin whitelist, the cores anywhere is no longer needed.
Okay. All right. In that case, I'm going to stop recording.